Hello everybody and welcome back to a new video and welcome to another Cholton Athletic video but today is something new, is something new that we're covering. So as you guys will know we are in the thick of our pre-season campaign and we're right in the middle of our pre-season friendlies and as you all should know Nigel Adkins has installed a lot of our young players into these games and has been giving a lot of them a shot, giving them some minutes in pre-season and giving them an opportunity to impress the manager going into the league campaign which kicks off in two weeks time. And this got me thinking, which of these young players could have a breakthrough season in 2021-22. So today I've picked out 10 of these players that are in Charlton's youth setup and I have ranked these players from 1 to 10 in terms of how likely they are to break into the Charlton team. Now just before I start I just want to say I am not ranking these players in terms of ability. I've simply put them pretty much in a random order from 10 to 1 and just, yeah, we're just going to talk about them, basically. So just want to get that out there. I'm not ranking them in terms of their ability. So let's get things started with number 10. And at number 10, we have Socceroos goalkeeper, Ashley Maynard Brewer. Now, the reason he is at number 10 is because technically he is already involved in the Charlton team. Of course, as we know, he was our second choice keeper last year behind Ben Amos, but of course, didn't play any League One football last year. The only games that he did play were in the Papa John's Trophy and in the FA Cup. So, didn't get a lot of minutes under his belt last year, but was our second choice keeper. And he has had a lot of loan spells out with Chelmsford City, Hampton and Richmond Borough and Dulwich Hamlet in the National League. And towards the back end of 2019-20, he moved to the National League and joined Dover Athletic until the end of that season, I believe, until it was curtailed by the COVID pandemic. Now, Maynard Brewer is a good shot stopper. When Nigel Adkins did that press uh, release after the whole saga with Ben Amos and our link to our now new number one goalkeeper, Craig McGillivray, Adkins sort of gave Maynard Brewer a bit of an ultimatum. He said, if Amos leaves, Maynard Brewer will be our number one. If Amos stays, then he will be going out on loan. It's fairly safe to say that Maynard Brewer will not be number one ahead of Craig McGillivray. So it's going to be interesting to see what Adkins does with Maynard Brewer. Is he going to loan him out or is he going to keep him as our number two like he did last year. If he does decide to go with the loan option, I think Maynard Brewer does need to be tested. I think he needs to go back to the National League or maybe even League 2 to test himself and get some regular football under his belt. Because as I say, I do rate him. I think he is a decent shot stopper. He just needs the minutes under his belt. Coming in at number 9, we have a player that has definitely a bit of a cult following on social media. It is, of course, Hadi Gandor. He does have a bit of a cult following out in Lebanon, as of course he is from there. Has represented presented them at youth level under 16 and under 18 level and actually has grabbed the goal under his belt for the under 16s in a friendly against Syria. <laughs> Careful! In our most recent pre-season friendly, Gandor did score the equaliser for us at the Majeski Stadium or the uh, Select Car Leasing Stadium. I think it's now called. He scored the equaliser there against Reading in our one-all draw. Really well taken goal as well. Really good finish. I've not seen all too much of him, but I, from what I have seen, I have been impressed. Obviously, we did sign him actually last season from Tooting and Mitcham from the Eastman League, where he played 58 games for them and scored 14 goals. So a relatively decent uh, return for them over a two season period I think it was. He came to our development squad where from what I've heard he did quite well. He scored a couple of goals and of course he has uh, signed a new one year contract. Obviously he originally signed a one year contract but the club had an option to extend that by a further year and the club have taken up that option. Now Gandor is a decent player from what I have seen. He's obviously very young, still at 21. Got a decent amount of pace about him. I think he is primarily a striker, actually, but can occupy the right wing position. And I really do think, if given a chance, I think he will take it because I think he's a decent player. I think he's got a bright future ahead of him from the development squad. He sounds like a decent player, and I definitely think he has got potential to break into the team this year if he is given the chance. I do expect him to be playing some cup games here and there this year. I expect him to be playing in the Carabao Cup tie against AFC Wimbledon later next month. Probably will be playing in the Papa John's Trophy games as well, maybe even in the FA Cup. And who knows, maybe even get the odd league appearance here and there. At number eight, we have a player that, if you have watched my channel over the past few years, you'll know that I don't particularly rate this guy and I'm not all that keen on him and it is Ben Dempsey. Now I was actually quite surprised to see Dempsey 
was actually given a new contract by the club next year, as I did expect him to move on permanently. But here he is. He is still at the club. He, I believe, has signed a new one-year contract, obviously spent last season out on loan in the National League with Woking, where he originally signed a loan until January, I believe it was. But that loan was extended until the end of the season, so he must have been doing something right over there. Like most of the players on this list, Dempsey has not made all that many professional appearances for Charlton. He's only made the seven appearances for the club, four of which came in the championship back in 2019-20, obviously due to the massive amount of injuries that we accumulated that season, and has had a number of loan spells with Kingstonian, Dulwich Hamlet, and then, of course, Woking, his most recent loan spell. He actually was with Woking uh, the season before, actually, I think from January he was loaned out until the end of the season or I think it was the start of the season and then he was recalled uh, to come into the championship team due to the injuries. I'm not entirely sure it was one or the other. And he's played 38 games for them over a two-year period in the National League. So he has proven himself at that level and as I say, I was quite surprised to see him come back as I don't... I'm not all that keen on him compared to the rest of the players in our academy. I definitely think there are better options out there. He did feature uh, against Reading, I think, very briefly. I'm not entirely sure if he's played in any of our other friendlies against Celtic, Welling or Dartford. But Dempsey, if he is given the chance in the league this season, I think he could potentially prove himself. Like I say, I'm not all that keen on him. But if he is given a chance, I'll back Adkins' judgment to play him. Now, this is where things start to get very interesting as we come across some very decent talent in this list. Coming in at number seven, we have a player that has really impressed me this preseason campaign, and that is winger Charles Claydon. And I seriously do think that this guy deserves minutes next season. I really do think he is a decent player, very similar to Hadi Gandor. I think this guy is something special. Obviously, he has featured quite a lot in our preseason campaign. In fact, I think he's played every single game so far in our preseason campaign. And he has got a goal and an assist to his name. The goal, of course, coming against Welling, where he took a shot from outside the box and beat the keeper at the near post. It was a fantastic strike. And, of course, he got the assist for Hadi Gandor's goal against Reading earlier this weekend. Now, Claydon, I think, is very similar in terms to Gandor. He does actually give me Alfie Doughty vibes with his pace. He's obviously a left-sided winger. His pace is electrifying. He'll get down the wing. He's got a really good eye for a pass as well, and obviously a great eye for a shot. Seriously does give me Alfie Doughty vibes when I watch him. He really is a decent, decent player. And whether he is to break into the first team or play in the development squad this year, I think he's going to have a good season this year. I really, really do. At number six, we have James Vennings, another central midfielder and another player that could definitely get involved in the team this season. Now, he actually has played quite a few games for the club in professional matches. He's played 10 games for the club, which when you say it like that, doesn't sound an awful lot, but it's actually a decent amount compared to the rest of the players on this list. He played three of these games in the championship, obviously in 2019-20 due to the injuries, and he did make one appearance in League One last year. That, of course, come in against Sunderland when our team was ever so slowly coming together after the Thomas Sangard era had begun. Other than those stats, there's not really a lot to go off, so I can only judge it off what I've seen. And from what I've seen from Vennings, he is certainly an energetic midfielder, obviously is quite small, quite nimble and light. And obviously with that, he comes with a lot of pace as well. He's again, another quick uh, little whip it. So I think he is again, a decent player in the middle of that park. And I think he, again, if he is to get game time in the league this season, I am a little bit worried in regards to his physicality, obviously with him being nimble and light, the league is quite physical. And obviously we saw that with Dylan Levitt last season when he was obviously supposedly the best passer at Man United. He came in and just didn't have the physicality for this league. Same with Paul Smith as well. When he came in, he lacked the physicality. So Vennings, I think, falls into that category as well with lacking the physical presence. Don't get me wrong though, his nimble, his nimble, light, technical ability definitely could attract the interest of Nigel Adkins and could definitely put him in that team somewhat this season. Now, originally I had this guy in at number four, but at the very last minute while I'm recording this, I've decided to move him down to number five. And this one is certainly an interesting one because this guy has really struggled with injuries over the past few years. And I think this year for this guy, it really is make or break. He has to break into the team this season, show what he can do, get some minutes under his belt, whether that is in cup competitions or if it is for him to go out on loan. 
He really needs to prove himself this year. And that is the Algerian midfielder stroke striker, Wasim Altria. Now, obviously, we picked him up from Marseille, I believe, in 2018, 19, maybe even earlier than that. And he has really struggled with injuries over the years since he has come over from France to England. He's really, really struggled over these past few years. Recently has returned to the squad, to the development team. He has featured, I think, a couple of times in pre-season. I haven't seen all too much from him. In terms of his professional Charlton career, he's made only one appearance for the club. That came in the Papa John's Trophy game against Leighton Orient. And... He scored. He scored a goal, a really, really good goal as well. A little tap in after a very good cross. In fact, from Hadi Gandor, I believe, was a really good cross towards the back post. And Altria got himself there, smashed it home. And it was actually a really, really good finish. Now, in terms of Altria, there really is not a lot to go off of him because he has struggled immensely with injuries over the years. But the club decided to exercise the option of a one-year extension. So he does have a one-year deal on the table. And like I said, this year is very much make or break for Altria. He needs to get some minutes under his belt and he needs to break into the team. From what I've heard, he's a very good player, a very talented player. But I've got him in the middle of this list here because... There's a lot of uncertainty when it comes to him because obviously, as I say, he has just come back from lengthy spells out with injuries. And I do believe there is a player there. I really do. I do believe there is a player there. And if he is given the chance, I think he will take that. And the player that has been moved up from the number five spot into the number four spot is Josh Davison. Now, if you read the most recent article in the South London Press, or one of the most recent articles anyway, you will know that it has actually been confirmed that Josh Davison will be in Nigel Adkins' plans for the squad this season. Now, it was pretty much left at that, so it's not known as to what he means, whether that means he's going to be a regular starter, whether he's going to be sat on the bench, or he's just going to be our fourth choice striker and will be called upon when he is called upon, essentially. Um, but yeah... I've got absolutely nothing against this. I've got nothing against Davison getting some minutes under his belt because, to be honest with you, I think it is about time that he gets some minutes under his belt. He obviously, last season, did prove himself at a decent level. Spent the first half of last season out on loan with Woking alongside Ben Dempsey, where he scored five goals in 14 matches. Obviously, that loan lasted until January, and he was immediately loaned out again, but this time to the division higher going to promotion chasing Forest Green Rovers, where he scored three goals in 22 games and obviously was a part of the team that made it to the playoff semi-final, but unfortunately lost out to Newport County in extra time. He did play a fair amount of games in the championship as well in the 2019-20 season. He played nine times for us in that championship season and was rewarded for his efforts with a goal against West Bromwich Albion, which I was very happy for him to score as his effort was just admirable it was just fantastic you know the effort he put in the effort that all of the young players put in was absolutely superb but there was a lot of pressure on Davison's shoulders there's a lot of our senior strikers you know Lyle Taylor McCauley Bond Jonathan Lecco Tom Ahmed all of them were struggling with injuries and Davison had to come in and did prove himself you know he really did give it a fair good go now obviously with Davison being confirmed by Nigel Adkins to be involved in the Charlton team obviously there is a lot of uncertainty with this one we don't know if he's going to be a regular we don't know if he's just going to be a bench warmer or it's just going to be called upon when Adkins feels like giving him a go now as I say I'm all for Davison getting a shot in League One because I think you know what it's worth it it's worth a go we played League Two football last season and played a decent amount of League Two football last year so Let's give it a go. And now we get on to the podium places, if we will. Moving on to the top three. Coming in in third place, we have a player that really, really impressed me last season. And I do believe that he deserves at least a chance in the league this season. And that is 18-year-old Charlie Barker. He was absolutely fantastic in the games that he played in League One. When he played last season, you couldn't tell that he was a 17-year-old player making his first like making his first appearance for the club effectively. He played nine times for the club last year and did actually score a goal in his second ever senior appearance against Swindon Town in the Carabao Cup, obviously scoring a header from a free kick. And Barker, honestly, he really impressed me. He when you look at him, he does not strike you as an 18 year old. He looks so composed on the ball. He actually looks like a decent dominant defender. And what was actually even funnier is that he actually was 
part of the under 18s team last season and he he hadn't played a minute of under 23s football let alone the senior squad so the fact that he was given that chance and took it so well last year just proves how good of a player he is i believe he has featured a couple of times in our preseason campaign this year but seriously I really do think Barker deserves a go. Obviously, we have got three centre-backs of the club currently. Innis Famuo, who obviously has recently joined the club on a, lo on a loan with an option to buy. And obviously, Jason Pearce is the other one. I think Barker should be given a go as our fourth-choice centre-back. I definitely would consider him as an option. But Charlie Barker is certainly going to be in for some competition for that fourth-choice centre-back spot. Because there is another defender that has come seemingly out of nowhere, completely out of left field and has seriously captured the attention of a lot of the Charlton fan base, and he seriously, seriously looks good. Coming in at number two, we have 17-year-old Deji Alleraway. I've seen him a couple of times in our development squad, obviously our under-18s uh, playoff campaign. Obviously, he played against Birmingham City and Wigan Athletic. But Alleraway really did impress me in those two games. He looked so dominant and, and composed. In these pre-season friendlies against Celtic, Welling, Dartford and Reading, he really has impressed me. The kid looks like the real deal. And if I was Nigel Adkins, I would be getting the notepad out and taking some serious notes on this guy. But there is one more player that I think tops the lot of them. And I genuinely believe this guy is the best talent currently in our academy. And this guy I really do hope gets minutes in our team this season. Coming in the number one spot, we have 17-year-old midfielder Aaron Henry. He really is some talent in the middle of that pitch, seriously. He made his professional debut in the 2019-20 season in the FA Cup third round tie against West Bromwich Albion at the age of 16. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe he actually became our youngest ever appearance maker in that game, beating John Joe Shelby's record. Correct me if I'm wrong with that one. And he has also played a couple of times in the Papa John's Trophy as well, played all three of our group stage games last season. And of course has featured in our pre-season campaign where he scored an absolutely fantastic fantastic goal against Welling 25 yards out on the left foot his weaker foot as to say and scored a fantastic goal at the near post which was a really really good strike and this guy seriously for the under 18s and the development squad as well because he broke very quickly into that on the 23s team he has been absolutely instrumental he has seriously got a long shot on him his free kicks are absolutely fantastic he is an absolute baller and he will legally be allowed to drink in this country on the 21st of August. What am I doing with my life? This kid is something. Aaron Henry really is something special. And he is a player that we need to keep hold of, like Deji Alleraway. And we really do need to give him some minutes this season. And I hope that he does. I really hope that he does. I really hope that all of these players do. But Aaron Henry... I, I just have to put him at the top of this list because this kid is something special. So that is it for this video, guys. There are 10 Cholton Academy players that I think could break into the team this season. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, can you possibly leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and turn on those post notifications so you're notified of when I post. What do you guys think of the 10 players that I picked in this video? Let me know in the comments below. Do you guys think that they could break into the team? Have I missed out any youth players that you think could break into the team this season? Let me know in the comments below. This has been Tyler Rowlinson. Have a nice day and I will see you all on Saturday for my 2021-22 League One predictions. I am not looking forward to that video whatsoever. I'm not looking forward to making it because it's going to be so, so difficult to put together. Honestly, it is definitely the most difficult league to predict this year. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Take it easy. Stay safe. See you guys later.